Welcome back. Hi, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Mango Materials presentation. My pleasure today is to introduce Alison Piecha. She is the CTO at Mango Materials, and uh, Alison will tell us a little bit about how they can transform biogas methane into biodegradable polymers. With that, Alison, over to you. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you everybody for um, your attendance here and for joining into my talk. So the, what we do at Mango Materials is we address um, two problems, one of which is the methane that's in the atmosphere and the other is the huge plastics problem. So as many of you I'm sure are aware, plastics are in part of our everyday lives. We can't really get away from them. And just a small fraction of plastics are actually ever recycled. Plastics are accumulating in the ocean, in the environment and landfills. And so at Mangoterials, we really believe it's time for a better way. So what if we could use those waste carbon emissions to help eliminate plastic pollution? So we, we tackle both of these threats, methane and plastic pollution, and we have this technology. We built gas fermentation process that can transform methane into biopolymers, which are a substitute for conventional plastics. And it is our belief at Mango Materials that waste facilities are the gold mines of the future and will provide the, pave the way to getting future resources. So what we do at Mango Materials is we take methane emissions we feed them to naturally occurring bacteria who accumulate the biopolymer PHA inside their cell walls. We then separate out the, the biopolymer from the remainder of the cell and form the PHA biopo biopolymer powder, which we form into granules. We can then make this into a variety of biodegradable products that at the end of their useful lives can go to a waste facility where if degraded under conditions without methane, they will actually produce, or sorry, without oxygen, they will produce methane. So in this way, we can produce a closed loop cycle. Of course, there's other parts that aren't shown here, but overall it can be generally closed loop. And just briefly before I dive into the more technical aspects of our technology, I want to just share that uh, the products that we are currently focused on. So we did commercialize our first product at the end of last calendar year, and it was a soap dish with the company Natura intended to house like uh, bar soaps as well as shampoo and conditioner soaps. So Natura is based out of Brazil and the soap dish was available exclusively at their flagship store there. The other products that we're focused on are other injection molded plastics for specifically for packaging for cosmetics, and then also uh, textiles. We have some other projects working on 3D printing or blown films, but those are our primaries. And now a little bit of background about the polymer we produce. So we produce the polymer called polyhydroxyalkanoate, and on the left you can see the chemical structure for the generic PHA. The R group, shown with an orange circle around it, can represent any number of different side chains. And at Mango Materials, we focus on the particular polymer where that R group is a methyl group, a CH3, and that's known as polyhydroxybutyrate. So P3HB is the preferred subtype of different PHAs. Uh, for us, it's the most common, it's the most well studied. Uh, we can produce it consistently and uh, use it for a variety of different products. And what is the physiological role of PHA? So why do the, the cells even want to produce it? So if we as humans eat too much carbon, our bodies want to store it and produce fat cells. As bacteria, one of the options for storing excess carbon is this PHA. So under what we call balanced growth conditions, which is when the bacteria have plenty of uh, carbon and, and nutrients, the bacteria bacteria uh, will just grow as normal and replicate. And then under conditions where the nutrients are deficient, the bacteria won't be able to replicate. So what they do is they still want to store the carbon if they have an excess of it, and they accumulate it in their cell walls as PHA. And a little bit more background on PHA, it's a family of naturally occurring biopolyesters, very widely found across the bacterial populations. And as an application, it can be used as a substitute for most, most plastics. Of course, it's also biodegradable, which is really key for us. So it'll biodegrade under a variety of conditions because it is produced naturally. There are many bacteria in the world that will degrade it under different conditions. And PHA also offers a wide range of customizable, property, customizable properties through either the use of copolymers or the use of uh, processing different conditions and additives. So now I wanna step back on more on the methane side and talk a little bit about the history of industrial methanotroph use and how that's come to be. So methanotrophs, as for those of you who aren't familiar, they are the bacteria that we use. They're, they're the ones that utilize methane as their sole source of carbon and energy. They were discovered as bacteria over 100 years ago, but they've been present on Earth billions of years, so they're really ancient microorganisms. And industrial methanotroph research surged back during the oil boom in the 1970s, and then they really kind of fell off the radar for a while because methane just it wasn't as popular to do this research. And you know, back they've been studied for industrial uses for over 30 years as in bioremediation. That's been one of their most popular uses. And then